Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome everyone and all ye saints of the Most High God. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I praise God and thank Him for another opportunity to be before you and to be gathered with you today in honor and reverence of His holy name. There is a word that the Lord has uh, given, and I want to expound on it and, 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 and encourage everyone talking to believers today, talking to the people of God, and hopefully stir you up in the spirit and encourage you and empower you, and myself as well. So, hallelujah, glory be to his name. Let us bow in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord God. We thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you for your, your loving kindness toward us. We thank you for preserving us, O oh Lord God, and keeping us with sound minds and with able bodies. We thank you for all the provisions that you've made for us in providing shelter and clothing. Oh, uh, for us, oh God, and for all that you've done and all that you are yet to do, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for this word, Lord God, that, that you have given to encourage us. And Father, I just pray and welcome your presence tonight. Welcome you into the room, into our midst, Lord God, and, and pray that you would that you would take residence, that you would take control. Uh, of this message and, and, and speak what you will speak, Lord God, uh, unto your people. And I just glorify your honor and I praise you uh, for these and many other wonderful blessings in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to go to the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. First Samuel 17, and this, it is kind of lengthy, so I will, I may skip, I may skip a couple of verses, but I'm going to try to read as much as I can. Uh, this fit day, I won't read all of it, but I read, I read about 40 some verses. Yeah, I know that's a lot, but y'all bear with me, God going to speak to us. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah, and Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's uh, head weighed six hundred shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. He stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, 
they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let's go down to verse 16. It says, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said to David his son, Take now for thy brethren an heap of, of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run unto the camp to thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. And spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those, uh, those fish sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for, uh, uh, and he sent for him, excuse me. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine uh, to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And he arose against me, and I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And David said, Moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. 
also he armed him with a coat of mail, and David, David girded his sword upon his armor, and he assayed uh, to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. He took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even uh, in a strip. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give uh, the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved it, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of more. And it came to pass, verse 48, it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hastened. This is why I wanted to uh, uh, read this verse here. David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took this a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead. And he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in, in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out, out of the sheath thereof, and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to take for a title. Set the battle in a ring. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you people of God to set the battle in a ring. I think about, uh, you know, young people of God that, that, give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, become saved, become a Christian, and have no idea that you have just entered into war. Now, I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm just giving you the facts. When you become a Christian and take on the name of Jesus Christ, there is war. And, 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 and so I want to encourage you to be prepared for war. So set the battle in a race. Set your mind and your heart and everything in you be prepared to go to war. But now, unlike David and, and the men of Israel in these days, they fought against armies of people. Our warfare is different. The scripture tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Our fight is with spiritual entities. We fight against Satan and his demons, his demonic host. And so we fight, no, we are fighting a spiritual battle. And David in his day, he was fighting against people. We have a great advantage uh, over David in his days, in the days of David. Uh, his enemy was people, and he killed people with swords and with spears as he grew, you know, and became a man of war, and became his king over Israel. But he, we have the advantage of a crucified savior, or savior, Jesus Christ, or rather, risen again from the dead, and, and all power in heaven and earth has been delivered into his hand, and then he in turn gave to us the keys of the kingdom and said, the things that you have seen me do, uh, the spiritual warfare that you have seen me do in this earth shall you do also in greater works, because I'm going to my father. David didn't have the privilege of of understanding spiritual warfare. He didn't fight against demon and principalities, against powers and wickedness in high places. He, he fought against people and killed people. Uh, but he didn't know about uh, casting out demons. He didn't have power to tread upon serpents and, and, and to go to spiritual warfare. Now, he was a prophet, a man of God. He heard from God, and he did according as God made him to do. Hallelujah. But we are living under different covenant. David was under the old covenant. He wore in physical warfare. We are under new covenant, a, a, a more powerful covenant, the power of an endless life. We have a high priest that is sitting in the heavens on the right hand of his father, forever making intercessions on our behalf. And so we have a power that David knew nothing about. So so what I want to do in this message, I want to contrast, uh, if you will, uh, the way David went to war and, and the way God is, 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 is pushing us to go to war in the spirit. Uh, I like reading this about David and Goliath because there are some principles there are some principles in the way that David went to war that we can use in the way we go to war. We have an advantage actually over, over David. He didn't he didn't know spiritual warfare. He didn't know uh, how to go to war against principalities and powers and spiritual weakness in high place against the rulers of the darkness of, of this world. He didn't have a, a crucified Savior, or rather a, a Savior that is risen again uh, from the dead and, and, and have all power in his hand and, and in turn uh, have given unto us the keys to the kingdom and say, all these things that you have seen me do shall you do also because I'm going to my father and I'm, he, we have a, a, a priest, a high priest sitting on the right hand of the father, uh, ever making intercession on our behalf. David didn't, didn't have, he didn't know Jesus Christ revealed him and, and, and the, how the war in the spirit, when he, when he fought, he fought against people and killed people. So some of the tactics that he used uh, in the spiritual uh, the faith part of his walk. Uh, we learn from the Old Testament these things that are written, are written for our learning and to show us uh, how 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 to to be obedient to God and how God uh, helped the men that were with him uh, and the women that, that followed him and how he intervened because of their faith and their trust in him. We can learn some things. From this. So I want to begin to to look at this story about David and Goliath. Now it started off talking about them setting the battle in a raid, army against army. And so 
as we look at it, we looking at the Philistines, we looking at Goliath, they represent Satan and his host. And all the demons that's born against us in the spirit. So let's look at them like that and, and, and look at David and, and, and the children of Israel where I want to look at us. Look at David. Uh, look at us as David because David was a man of faith. He didn't, he didn't fear uh, like the rest of Israel did. And so I want to look at his faith versus how, how the rest of the army dealt with this situation they were in. Amen? So it, it began with the, with the Philistines standing on a mountain and Israel on the other mountain and, and a valley between them. And, and they sent out a champion, a giant man. Goliath was a, 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 a humongous man. He was over nine feet tall when uh, uh, some scholars measured him out. Uh, talked about his beam and talked about his helmet. Talked about his breastplate, a target on his chest, a breastplate on him. A man going before him uh, to bear a shield in front of him. Shield bigger than the man, but he carrying a shield and get walking in front of Goliath to battle. And so the children, the men of Israel, the first thing they began to do as this this champion, first of all, he, he began to defile them. He began to curse them by his God, and he began to talk uh, great swelling words to cast uh, them down and to defeat them. And so they were defeated in the spirit before they even stepped on the battleground. They were defeated just by looking at the size of him. They were defeated uh, uh, psychologically before they even went to war because they were saying, they were saying, have you seen this Philistine? Have you, have you looked upon him? Have you seen the size of him? Have you seen his helmet and his staff and his, his, his spear? Have you seen a man going before him? Who, who can fight against this Philistine? And so they were already defeated. And for 40 days, the Bible said this Philistine defied them and cursed them and cursed their God, cursed them by his God. But I love it when God, he always have a plan. He, the enemy always uh, uh, go too far. He come out and he actually began to get overconfident. He, he began to speak these words. And when he see people afraid of him, he see people looking on his side and looking on what he's saying. He know he got you when he can get you to listen to his words. And so. But the thing about it is he get overconfident and he goes too far. God had a set up. He sent David, a man full of faith. David had just got anointed by Saul, uh, by Samuel, I mean, by the, by the prophet. God had just anointed him as king over, over Israel. And no one knew it but, but God and Samuel and David. So God said, I need a man that's after my own heart. And he knew that the faith that was in David. So he, he set it up. The Philistine had been defiling Israel for 40 days. But all of a sudden on this day, the 40th day, it's something about the 40th day. God set it up where David could be in the midst of the army. And when this Philistine go out, and he began to speak those words as he had spoke for 40 days. I, first thing I began to think, why Why is he uh, talking and intimidating them 40 days? Why are they uh, uh, listening to him for 40 days? Why haven't someone lifted up in the spirit? How, why haven't someone moved by faith? Where well, it shows you their faith. They were looking on, on, on the enemy. They were listening to his words. People can discourage you. They began to say things uh, to discourage them all, their own selves. Have you seen this Philistine? Who can go up against him? Who can fight against him? No, I'm not going. You going? No, I'm not going. And they began to 
to discourage their own selves. Hallelujah. But God sent a child. God sent, sent David. David heard the words that this Philistine went for. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. Who is this? David heard these words and he got angry. Who is this talking with these great swelling words? Who is this? It was the uncircumcised Philistine. He, he don't have a covenant with God. We are the people of God. Why are your hearts failing because of him? Why are you all afraid? People will get jealous of you when they hear your faith, when they hear you begin to challenge the devil. Devil, that same spirit of getting get in your brothers and getting and people that's on your side, supposedly. People that are that are brother in the spirit. Now you know you can't do that. No, no, we don't we don't do it like that here. Well, that's why you defeated. Because you don't do that like that. You're not moving by faith. David rolls up in the spirit. Who is this defying the people of God? We have a covenant with God. And we are God's people. And if God be for us, who can be against us? David knew the word of God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and he was fueled by the word of God. Hallelujah. And I love it because the spirit stirred up in him. But his brother looked on him, his eldest brother, he lied up and said, speak to David. Why did you come here? With whom hast thou left those few sheep? I know your pride. I know the naughtiness of your heart. You came here to see the battle. David evidently is used to attacks like this from his brother. What have I now done? What is it now, man? Is there not a cause? I have a reason to be here. My father sent me here. Hallelujah. He's saying his father, Jesse, but I'm saying his father, God. Because this was a setup. I think God sent him at this at this particular time. God, the master of time and the master of circumstances, sent someone to deliver his people. Sent one that 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 was full of the faith. That's what it's gonna take for us. It takes the spirit of faith. Somebody that's filled with the spirit of faith. That's going to stare the devil down. That's going to stare uh, these situations down that's trying us. And this, this, these reports that we are hearing, it causes us to fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These reports came in, the, in, in David's day in, in, the, in, the, in the form of a giant, a Philistine. Our reports come in the forms of of, of bad news in the forms of doctors telling you you got cancer, you got two days to live or, or, or two months to live. If anybody can rise up against that, if anybody has faith that that will stir up against a, a evil report, we we fight a different warfare today. And so David rose up in the spirit, and then had got challenged by his brother, someone that's supposed to have been of the same faith. Put this giant same church. I'm talking to us now. There are people that, that sit beside you in the pews and, and go to the same church, supposed to be of the same faith, but they can talk you out of your faith. How is it that, that people that we supposed to 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 be able to lean on and depend on it and, and, and to tell them, pray for me, brother. And they can discourage us so. Sometimes you got to break away from people. When his brother lifted up against him, David said, is there not a cause? And he turned from him. 
And I'm telling you that sometimes you got to turn away from the people that, that's speaking doubt to you, that's speaking an evil report to you, that's telling you you can't do that, or, or you need to go to the doctor, you need to do this, or you need to do that. And not even considering the Lord that they say they trust in. Have not given you a word to encourage you. Have not said, try the Lord. Well, well I'm going to pray with you about this. Or, and let's join our faith together and let's do this. You got to turn away from people like that. You got to get, get stirred up in your spirit. David spake to the man and said, what's going to happen to the man that's going to kill this, this Philistine and take away this reproach from Israel? They say the king is going to give you his daughter and make your father's house to give your daughter, give you his daughter to wife and going to make your father's house free in Israel. They even say, okay, okay, send me out at them. And they were told the king, oh, Saul, we, we have one. We have somebody that, that's willing to go against this Philistine. Everybody's heart was failing because of the words of the Philistine. And there are people that are that are say things to you that are cause your heart to fail. It's not good to get a report from a doctor or, or, or get a report from your lawyers. You know, here in my situation, we hear things from our attorneys that, that cause our heart to fail, to discourage us. Hallelujah, but I don't listen to my attorney. I have an attorney over me. I have a lawyer on my case and a physician on my life. Hallelujah, Jesus, Christ the righteous. He is my attorney, and he is my physician. Hallelujah, and I, I call upon him. I'm talking about literally. I call on the Lord my God. I seek him first counsel from him. Lord, what would you have me to do? And I'm trying to encourage you that whatever happens in your life, look to the Lord. Turn it to him. People will discourage you. People will tell you. Uh, and sometimes they might mean well, but it's the same message. And they don't know that their words are, are against the faith. Hallelujah. But the scripture tells us to fight the good fight of, work, of, of, of faith. And so we take the words of God and we cleave unto him. When he said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee, we believe in that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know he, he gave some doctors some abilities to do some things. But I'm trying to encourage you that everything is not for the doctors. God has set it up for some things that he allowed that he wants to try your faith and to see if you can trust me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm looking at David and how he got stirred up against this Philistine that defied the armies of the living God. And he spoke the word, I defy Israel. That let you know this this is this is this is straight uh I'm coming straight for your faith. The enemy is saying I'm opposing you and I'm I'm coming after your faith. I defy you, I defy your God. That's when the enemy messes up. David David won David didn't bag down. David said who is this uncircumcised? Who is this this Philistine that's coming against? We are the people of God. And how dare he come against us in this manner? Coming against us with sword and spear. He trusting in things. Hallelujah. You come against me with sword and spear and with shield. I come against you in the name of my God. Hallelujah. So I stir you up, people of God. Get stirred up in your spirit and begin to run toward the enemy. 
began to fight the good fight of faith and began to speak the word of, of Jesus Christ, saying that I have given you all power. I have given you power over all the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. And over all the principalities and, 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 and the powers of Satan. I have given you power to cast them out. There's some things we need to cast out. Cast out of our mind. Cast out the words that people are speaking unto us. Hallelujah. We got to begin to war in the spirit. Hallelujah. We got to speak the words of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We fight. Uh, Jesus said uh, when the enemy came against him. Satan tempted him for 40 days and for 40 nights. And every time, every time the enemy spoke to his mind to discourage you, if you be the son of God, I see, I see you, you're hungry now. You've been fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights, and, and you're weak now. If you are the son of God, turn these stones in, into bread and, and eat. Jesus said, it is written. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord God. That's man live. Man, I don't I don't live according to it. And who are you that I should try to prove myself to you? And that's 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 the tactic of the enemy. He tried to get you to prove things to him. Yeah, I hear you, I, I hear you say you saved. I hear you have proclaimed the name of Jesus. Uh, but I know your weakness. I I know the things that, that you like. I know the things that, that you are subject to. And so the enemy is going to come at you. He's going to come at your weak point. He know what presses your button. He know that gets you what gets you off tilt, kilter. He know what gets you off the tracks. And so he's going to come at you like that. And I'm saying to you also... In the time of peace, there's a season that the enemy will leave you. And you'll think, wow, man, I can relax now. But I'm saying to you to begin to prepare for battle. Because when the enemy is gone away, he's only gone for a season. And he's gone to strategize and, and, and to see, can he come at you from a different angle? To, to, to take uh, uh, counsel against you. To come at another, come at you in another way. He's never gonna stop, but until our faith rises to the level that discourages him from even trying to come and tempt you, there is a, 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 a way that you can you can discourage him from coming at you. When your faith, uh, when you begin to defeat him by your obedience to the word of God. The enemy will begin to be discouraged, and he'll quit coming at you that way. He'll try you in another way, but when your faith defeat him in that way also, you let them know that I'm ready for the battle. I'm ready for warfare. Hallelujah. I'm ready for any way you coming at me, Satan. I'm, I'm ready. I'm armed, and I'm prepared. Hallelujah. Saul tried to put David, David on his arm and, and try to teach, tell, tell him to go to war in his way, the way he know about him. But everybody, we don't go to war in the same way. Your faith may not be uh, uh, the same as someone else's faith. But God will give you strategies on what you do according to your faith. Hallelujah. According to your faith. So he told Saul, I can't I can't go with these things. Oh, I have I have not proved these things. But there's a way that it, that I've been proving of. I, I I'm I'm I know how to war like this. God has trained me like this. Chose for five smooth stones and took a sling in his hand and ran toward the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, this enemy looking on him, disdaining him. Am I a dog that you sent a boy after me? A, 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 a ruddy boy and, and, you know, the goodly continence. And, and this is a boy. I'm a man of war. I'm, I'm, I'm a kill. I'm, come here, boy. I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to feed your flesh to the bowels of the earth. David said, no. 
You don't understand the way I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you in the name of my God. You looking on your side and you looking on your past on, on what you've done in the past. Hallelujah. But I'm I'm coming at you in the name of, of the Lord, my God. Hallelujah. 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 And so we come at the enemy in the name of our God. And we be obedient to the warfare where we he have, have, have uh, called us to war. And we fight the good fight. And so I encourage, I stir you up in the spirit. And it encourages you to, to fight a good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. To take the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and begin to use them against the enemy. We have uh, 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 armor that, that we are to take on. We we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, against the tactics, against the strategies of the enemy. Hallelujah. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spirits. We're wrestling against principalities, against powers. Hallelujah. Take on you the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Having your loins girt about. Having a belt of, 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 of truth. Hallelujah. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stand on the word of God. Taking the shield of the spirit where you may be able to quench them, the fiery dots of the enemy and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so we fight by faith. And we, by our faith, we, we quench all the dots, all the words of the enemy. We put our faith against it. And we put the word of God as our offense. We begin to speak to the tactics of the enemy. The words that he's sending to us to discourage us and telling us you can't do that. And, and, and we quote to him, oh yes I can. For I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without him I can do nothing. But with Jesus I can do all things. Hallelujah. So we quote the word of God and we be armed with the armor of God and we fight the good fight of faith and we war in the spirit, not according to how other people war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get a word from God. Get your face in the word of God and hear from God and he'll tell you, he'll direct you on what you ought to do. He'll tell you exactly the strategy. Uh, 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 of what he wants you to do to be successful. Other times in David's life when he went up against these same Philistine warriors, these same soldiers, he would go out and, 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 and he would ask the Lord, Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? And if I go up against them, will you deliver them into my hand? He said to David one time, yes, go against them, for thou shalt surely prevail against them. David went out to war and fought them and defeated them. Three months later, they had they had fled from David. He killed most of them, but they went and regrouped. They got some more men, and they came back against David again and set the battle in array against him. David prayed to the Lord again, Lord, shall I go against these Philistines? And if I go against them, will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said, no, this time, David, don't go against them. This time. This time, what I want you to do, I want you to stand over by the mulberry tree. And I just want you to stand there. You set the battle in a way like you finna fight them. But just stand there. Don't move. Don't say a word. Just stand there. Hallelujah. And when the Philistines saw David and his army pitched against them, the Bible said God sent a rumor 
he sent a wind through the top of the mulberry trees and 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 the tree the wind began to blow and the and the philistines heard the sound of a going forth hallelujah and they began to be confused they began to think that david had hired another army against them and they were thrown into such a confusion in the spirit that they began to fight against one another and, and to kill one another. They kill themselves. So when we hear a word from God, he'll tell us exactly what to do. Sometimes he'll say, yes, my son, speak out against this thing. Speak, speak. And he'll give us the words to speak. Cast out that demon. Lay your hands on that child. So God, God is trying to, to build a relationship. He wants to be a relationship uh, with us so we can we can hear his 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 spirit speaking to us how that he can instruct us on exactly what he wants us to do because we may try the same thing twice and it may not work the second time. What worked the first time may not work the second time. And so we have to have that 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 relationship where we can hear the spirit of the Lord speaking to us and instructing us. That's how God uh, wants to train us up uh, in the spirit. That's the importance of hearing the word from God. That's the that's the importance of knowing the word of God that that we may hear from Him and hear clear and specific instruction from Him. He knows uh, uh, the warfare. He knows the battle. He wants us to fight and how He wants us to do. So we got to be one with Him. We got to be open. Our ears and the spirit have to be open to hear the word of God and to be instructed by him and to know how we ought to, to behave ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So so in the peacetime when we're when we feel like uh, I'm not being tried, I'm I'm not being tempted by the enemy and all is well right now, that's the time we ought to be searching out. And, 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 and seeking unto the Lord and praying and fasting and getting hard out to him that he may show us because he'll begin to show us what the enemy is planning against us. He'll show us the next move. He'll show us and, and guide us hallelujah on exactly how we ought to do. And so I encourage you people of God Hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. Fast, pray, seek unto the Lord God. For dear life. Because our life depends on our relationship with him. Scripture says over and over the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We are the ones that are justified by God. We are the just, and so we live by faith. We live by hearing and obeying the words of our God. Hallelujah. So so we can learn uh, from things and, 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 and tactics that we see how David warfare, uh, uh, and how he trusted God and how he prayed and heard direct from God on, on what to do. Hallelujah. This particular story, uh, uh, he he hadn't built that relationship with God yet, but he knew about faith. He knew that he was anointed. He knew that he was uh, a man after God's heart. He knew that God had poured the oil on him and that the spirit of faith was in him. Hallelujah. So he moved by that word that he already knew to obey God. But we see throughout his life as he grew, how he became uh, established as king over Israel. We saw how he prayed and, and how he fasted and how he, he, he worked on his relationship with God, how he prayed night and day and how he sought the Lord before going to battle and how he sought the Lord on how to do in the battle. Hallelujah. And how the Lord instructed him in everything. 
Told him one time, yes, go up. Told him another time, no, don't go up. This battle, you won't have to fight this one. Ah, this is my battle. And so when we uh, build that relationship up, when we learn or train to hear the word of God, then God will begin to instruct us and show us exactly what to do. So seek unto him like that. Don't be discouraged by, by people that you trust in. People that you believe to be your brother or your sister in the faith. And indeed they might be. I'm not saying trying to say anything bad against them. But they not they may not know what God wants for you to do. So you have to seek the Lord out for yourself. The scripture said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because there's a word God has for you. And he, he won't tell anybody else. People will mean well. They'll, they'll want to, to tell you to do this and to do this. And they mean well. But Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody don't have the faith like you think they do. And some do. Some might be telling you right, but you won't know until you are trained to hear the word of God. And so I encourage you to seek the Lord for yourself. Seek the Lord uh, for relationship that you may know him for yourself. And that's what God is desiring. He's desiring to know every one of us individually. Hallelujah. You can't be saved off your parents' faith, off your grandparents' faith. God don't have any grandchildren. God only has sons and daughters. Yeah, you don't have grandchildren. That means you can't be saved through your parents' faith or through somebody you love. Faith. God wants to know you intimately, personally. And so I encourage you, seek the Lord. And Father, we just thank you for this word, Lord God. We thank you uh, uh, for your spirit, which guides us, which comforts us, which helps us. Hallelujah. Which empowers us to go forth with boldness. To go forth in confidence, knowing that, that you are with us and you are guiding us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? We thank you, Lord God, that you are for us and that you are with us. Hallelujah. I pray for your people, Lord God, that they may get uh, uh, stirred up in the spirit that a hunger and a thirst and may stir up in the spirit that they desire you so that they come after you, Lord God, to hear a word from you, that you may instruct them, that you may guide their lives. Hallelujah. Whether to turn here or to turn there or to keep forward, order our steps, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Order our steps by your words. Hallelujah. David said, your word is a light unto my feet, uh, 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 and a, a lamp unto my feet, and a, and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. So I pray that your words be our guide and light to instruct us in your ways. And Father, we'll be so careful in every day to glorify your name, to honor you, and to give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and I thank you, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah and amen.